another day on the project down here in my basement. I'm going to show you guys the fire blocking that I've been working on. For some reason, um, I filmed some of it. I didn't film all of it because obviously that would be pretty boring for you guys to sit through all that. But uh, I lost some of the footage for some reason, um, which really sucks. But that is what it is, I guess. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually just going to walk around and show you what I did for the fire blocking so that you guys can have an idea if you have to do fire blocking at your house, um, kind of where to get started. I didn't know uh, what to begin with or what to do. Um, luckily, my county's website actually had a, a, a fair amount of information. I also reached out to the county inspector's office and emailed them a few things. They were very, very kind and replied, um, especially during the COVID times because uh, all the inspections are actually virtual here. So I emailed them a bunch of pictures to make sure I was doing it properly. They responded back and um, actually showed me, you know, doing like, Know, old school Microsoft Paint and you know drawing lines on the pictures and stuff like that so that was very helpful to me so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the camera around walk around the basement so I can show you um, what I've been doing and all the fire blocking that I've got installed and just kind of um, give you some hints I guess if you're getting started on your own basement project all right I guess I'll get started here um, I basically had to go around the perimeter of my whole basement in order to um, install the fire blocking as you can see um, the county inspector recommended I do it this way first to put all this fire blocking up before I actually started to stand up the walls for framing just because he said it was easier to get it in this way before actually trying to retrofit if you will put the fire blocking in after you put the stud or after you put the walls up so I'll just walk you through um, you can see the pieces where they are um, having to cut a bunch of different pieces to get these down. I'm using 2332nds OSB Here you can see there was a penetration through that for this um, water line and any penetrations has to be sealed up with this orange um, spray foam Make sure you buy the orange spray foam because the inspectors are going to be looking for that It's I think it's no different than the other kinds of foam except that the orange is quickly identifiable as fire blocking if you're going to do spray foam make sure you get the orange version so here is another couple of penetrations that had to go through the fire blocking um, from uh, these are the main um, sewer drain lines that come from the upstairs more orange fire blocking now what you see right here is actually a, a piece of the, two pieces of fire blocking where I actually did not get them butted up against each other and left just a small gap it might have been like I don't know I'd say somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch, but I just wanted to make sure that was airtight. So I sprayed some of that foam in there so you can see it. All the way down, had to get all of this installed. This was a huge pain, by the way. Um, this is going to be where my soffit starts, so it'll go down and under. I'll do some more fire blocking of the soffit when I actually get to that. More all the way down. This space is going to be unfinished, so it didn't require fire blocking right here. Just this small five square foot or five by five area. And then down around here again, all the way through, some more spray foam. It's kind of dark in this area, so sorry about that. All the way down around here. And then kind of finished. There's some more over on that side of the basement as well but you kind of get the idea I have a lot of scrap that was left over from having to cut various angles um, that's easily one maybe one and a half sheets of OSB that was just kind of left over I'll show you the tools that I use I use this craftsman saw it actually has a laser guide on it which I would recommend using because it definitely if you don't have one of those um, pieces of metal that helps you actually keep a straight line. The laser helps a lot with that. Um, obviously, doing this is not finished carpentry, so it doesn't have to be, you know, perfectly straight, but you do want to try and keep it as straight as possible, obviously. I still have OSB left over. This is going to be for some other projects. I'm going to be building some shelves in my unfinished storage. Um, I also will be using it to do some more fire blocking around the soffits that I have to build later. Other tools that I used, this saw, I cut the OSB, my brother-in-law um, gave me some of these clamps that you can see over here, 
These are very helpful to actually clamp the OSB down, especially when you got down to a sheet that was just hanging off and it would topple over otherwise. You just clamp it down with these. These are really helpful. Um, let's see what else did I use. Tape measure, pencil. Also use my framing square to draw some lines to keep the line straight. Compressor, nail gun. Um, I'm sorry that I lost the footage of this but you can see um, kind of what you're looking to do for all the fire blocking. This was a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. Um, so if, you, if you're doing this yourself, just plan for probably more time than you think it's going to take in order to do this because it took a lot of measuring. One tip that'll be good for you if you're doing this yourself is to get your floor lines, your wall lines laid out first. In my other video, you'll see that I used a laser to shoot that line from the basement floor and transfer it up onto the ceiling. And those lines that I actually drew through the blocking here are exactly where that fire block comes out to. So that way, when I stand up my walls, when I actually build the framing and put the wall up, it will go exactly up to this line. So it'll be a nice, perfect straight line for where that wall um, basically gets attached. It's extra work to do it that way. However, when I actually build the wall and then stand up the framing, it should make it a lot quicker in order to actually just put that wall right up flush with that line and it should be perfectly straight and then just tap it in with a couple of nails. If you're tackling fire blocking at home, hopefully this has have been helpful for you. Um, I didn't know what I was doing when I got started. One other thing I wanted to point out um, about the fire blocking in general with what to do with wires that you had to move. Um, right here you can see I actually had to drill through. In one of my earlier videos you can see that I had to actually drill through that bottom joist to get that wire up out of the way for the fire blocking. I came back with some kick plates, some metal kick plates, put two of them in there in order to protect that wire. That way when the, uh, when the guy's coming back in to do drywall, um, when they go to put nails in, they don't pierce through and destroy that cable. So uh, I wanted to just point that out again. So I just wanted to make sure that um, I came back and showed you guys what I did to protect those cables. So uh, stay tuned. The next video that I'll be doing, I'll actually be building the walls and starting to stand up some of the framing. So the basement should look very different here uh, just in the next couple of days. So um, anyway, if you're doing this and you're following along, comment, subscribe, um, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.